Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. What's up, haters? Back at it again. Ooh. Damn, man. Skeet, skeet. Fuck that oh, asshole. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, my favorite level. Hell yeah. Yo, the music here is pretty banging. Not gonna lie. That's my favorite part of these Uncle Slaughter. That's, the one, that's one. My favorite. The drilling part. Tower. Oh, ye. Alright. So, what I'm reading here is that Tails was originally only in Sonic Adventure 2 for story purposes. Okay. So, he wasn't in for but gameplay. Because of Fan Outcry, he wasn't in the. Uh, <laughs> he originally went in the game, and the fans were like, no, put him in there. So, they gave him a Mac. <laughs> Which leads me to believe that Eggman and Rouge and Knuckles was all there. Yeah, from the that's beginning. what I'm thinking. I'm pretty sure. Well what if here's my thing right it's a little confusing to at least the camera works in the knuckle stages holy shit um <laughs> what, what, what leads what's confusing about that is it i don't know maybe they didn't care about it but like to me having three for dark story and two for light story doesn't make sense so right. what if there was like what if it was like eggman and shadow on dark story and then like sonic and knuckles on light story and then when they added in Tails, they added in Roos to like equal it out. Okay, so this one's from the uh, Sonic Wikia. Yeah. It says, throughout its development cycle, Sonic Adventure 2 changed rather dramatically. Early media and interviews with Yushinaka point to there only being three playable characters okay. initially. Sonic, Knuckles, and Eggman. Okay. Which makes sense yeah, to me. that makes because, sense. Because like, if you're saying the Eggman stuff was more fleshed out, that's probably why. Mm -hmm. The Eggman stuff After is... outcry from very well done after outcry tail shadow and rouge were revealed to be playable okay which may explain why half the levels in the game recycle assets from other stages okay that makes sense probably that makes a lot although of i'm willing sense. to bet all of them were there for story purposes yeah definitely they were ever I, I agree anything. um when you when you look at a character like 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 uh like shadow his stages, there's only four of them. I always felt like he was maybe a last, a late addition. Um, because there's not a lot of his levels, and a lot of them are... Um, take, like, take his first level, Radical Highway. It's awesome, mm -hmm. um, and it's a city level, but it's just a completely different city level than, like, than City Escape, so it's not too big of an issue. Um, but take his, like, level, uh, White Jungle. It's just Green Forest with, like, a different skin of paint. Um, or Sky Rail is just Pumpkin Hill. Interesting. So, and then his final level, Final Chase, is the exact same final level as Sonic's final level. Right, right, because they're at the same place. Yeah. That makes sense. Which, I mean, that makes sense story-wise. So it does seem like Shadow's levels are recycled. Um, so... Interesting. Rouge makes sense to be recycled, because hers are just... If I've complained about Knuckles' levels so far... Well, that's the thing, though, like... It's weird to me the fact that like it was Sonic Knuckles and Eggman originally, yeah. <laughs> and not let's say Sonic Knuckles and Tails originally because that seems like from a conception point to be a good starting area. Yeah, I think it's because they did want to show like a dark story though. It's probably like a... clearly, but like the whole theme is definitely with the story like light versus dark. But gameplay wise, you get to experience only like a third of the game through that. Yeah. If if, if this was gonna end up being. Uh, if this reality, was, the, uh, if it was yeah. just gonna be Eggman. I have no <laughs> idea where the fuck I'm going. Meteor Herd is looking for the crystals. Meteor Herd. I don't think Meteor Herd is as big as um Death Chamber. I could be wrong. I need to actually fact proof, fact check my shit. Uh, but it's a really big level. And yeah, um, Drilling Tower. Uh, down below. Mm hmm. Um, on it. Wait, what did that last one say? Drilling tower. On a tower that contains a moving tube. What the shit does that mean? I have no idea, fam. Holy fuck. Anyway, so is there anything else interesting about the development of this game? Uh, I can look through it a bit more. Game development is always confusing me, like, how games change from their, like, their final product from their, their beta. That's true. And so I can tell you something a bit more interesting. Okay. Uh, so... You know probably that Sonic Team isn't just a bunch of Japanese developers, right? Yeah. There's like two branches of them, yeah, the that. US mm -hmm. group and the uh, Japanese group. So for uh, Sonic 1, 
that's sort of Japanese Sega. And then Sonic 2, that's American Sega. And then we don't see Japan Sega until like Sonic CD, right? Yeah. And Sonic uh, 3 and 9. The same is also true, though, for these 3D games. So Sonic Adventure 1 was headed up by that Japanese development. And then the American group, after seeing what Sonic Adventure could do, uh, was responsible for this game that we're playing now. That makes a lot of sense for a couple of reasons. The first Sonic Adventure story is very... It's, it's very RPG-like, it feels. Mm -hmm. um, and by that, the story is extremely RPG-like. There's an open world. There's side quests to, with, like, humans in the city and shit like that. They have emotions. Um, there's kind of like a leveling system almost inside the game. Fair. So it feels very much like an RPG. And I think that might be because of, like, the Japanese Sega developers. Um, it's very, and story-wise, again, it feels the most like a, like an RPG. And then we get Sonic Adventure 2, which is a streamlined... Oh, fuck, we're here now, okay. Which is a streamlined, just... Basically just a straight-up adventure game that's just entirely... You know what I'm saying? It's just completely streamlined. Not much more sure, I can say sure. about it. Um, right. And the story is the most American shit. Yeah, like, like more Hollywood anything. Yeah, it's okay. like it feels like a, like a big budget movie at times. It's less like Sonic Adventures like theme of like nature and disrupting balance, like a Godzilla type story yeah. almost. And it ends and up more being... of like a good versus evil with my evil clone, right? Yeah, like shit like we've seen in a thousand movies. Big budget <laughs> Hollywood movie. So like that makes right. a lot of sense. Okay. And then things like obviously City Escape was based off like their uh building in san francisco like where the team was headquartered at the time yeah you know shit like that the rap stuff you know <laughs> things of that nature all right so it's right here all right so what's to say drilling tower uh down below oh so it's in the ground okay anything else that's really interesting to me it's close uh let's see Hmm. I was really just yeeting right there. Oh, you already got one? Yeah, Clean. two stars and one moon. Oh, I think I know what that is. See, I, I do know where I'm going in most of these, and I am fairly good at the game due to how much I played it. The problem is, when you get levels this big, it still is going to take me a while to figure out where they are. Hmm. It's just... It's not fun. Um, seven minutes. It says here... Other early preview material point to the game at one point having branching storyline pathways. Really? One example given to this effect was a scenario involving Sonic trapped underwater in a submarine. The player would be given one of two options. Make Sonic try to pilot it, or open the hatch to take his chances in the water. Though scrapped for Sonic Adventure 2, branching storyline pathways were eventually introduced in SA2's pseudo-sequel Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> However, neither Sonic Adventure 2 nor Shadow the Hedgehog contains any scene with a submarine in it. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. Yeah, that sounds an awful lot like Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> That's actually kind of interesting that they were tooling with that. I'm glad it didn't get implemented because that would have been garbage, but... Sure, sure. It would kind of go against the whole streamline approach of SA2 yeah. as well. It would take away from the cinematic feel. Right. I mean, Shadow the Hedgehog tried to have it both ways, but... It didn't Clearly, work. we just end up with like nine random stories, and then the one that actually matters. <laughs> what, what I what I never liked about uh, Shadow the Hedgehog is that like they try to make you think like your choices matter, and then mm -hmm. like you finish the story say one way, and like the story is completely like say you choose Evil Shadow. I've seen like the final cutscene for that, and like Evil Shadow is like really fucking evil, and then it ends, and then you get a last story where he saves the day, and it just completely disregards the good side and the dark side stories well the neutral pathway is like the craziest of all like shadow just straight up believes he's a robot and then he's gonna get the other shadow androids and rule like over a terminator-esque <laughs> fucking whatever what which is like fuck? the furthest thing it's the furthest fucking thing that happens but most people right are gonna play the neutral pathway that's the part they're gonna experience and are probably gonna give up and not beat any of the other ones so if you I, I guarantee you if you ask most people what the ending of shadow the hedgehog is and the plot is for people who never got far in the game, they would tell you it's probably a story about like androids and shit like that. 
Is that damn android? I remember that Shadow really believes he's an android. For all the neutral pathway, it's like nothing but talks of am I a robot and Eggman being like, yes, you totally are. <laughs> and he never like asks Sonic or anybody else or whatever, and it's just a bunch of robot shit. And then none of the other pathways have anything to do with it. <laughs> that doesn't sound fun. Yeah. It says two stars in a moon, so I need to find like these these little shits over here. With right. Two stars and one moon on them. And I know roughly where it is, but again, the size of the map is so fucking giant. So ginormous. Who thought this was fun? Who thought this was a good idea? Oh, there it is. All right, sweet. It's closer. Ooh. Told you I knew where it was. Alright. Um, yeah, so Shadow the Hedgehog, do you recommend it? Uh, no. <laughs> but I don't recommend, like, most Sonic games, so yeah. That's take that with what you will. Fair. I think I said last episode, I don't know if I said this on call or off call, but I was like, this, this game, asking if I recommend Sonic Adventure 2 is a philosophical question. Right, right. And I think it's... there's good aspects of, like, Shadow the Hedgehog, and I think oh, there's yeah. good aspects of this game, and I think there's good aspects to, like, every Sonic game, if you really want to dig in there. I mean, mm -hmm. we were talking about how people defended 06, right? Yeah. It's just, like, the disadvantages are so big, but they might not mean anything to you, right? It really mm -hmm. depends on the type of Sonic player you are and how you like your Sonic and... You know, they're all so different from each other. I imagine most people can at least find one that fits their play style. <laughs> I mean, I want to point out the fact that I have over, I think, 100 hours on this game on Steam. Jeez. That's not from the story. That's from me unlocking all of the Sonic levels and just playing through them over and over again. Because they're that much fun. That's crazy. When I was little, like when I had this game on GameCube... What I would do was I'd actually, um, I'd play the levels in different, like, order and make up my own story as to why Sonic was going through that. That's how much I played this game. I, I absolutely loved it. I mean, I did that shit with the bunch of games I played. Yeah. And usually it was the ones that, like, so, uh... There was a good bit of time where, like, I've, I've expressed my love for Star Fox 64 mm -hmm. on multiple things. But there was a good period of time where I couldn't beat it. And obviously, yeah. when you're, like, a kid or whatever, and you try to play Star Fox 64, like, that shit's hard. Especially yeah. if you're trying to figure out, like, how to get on the hard path and stuff like that, whatever. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, rather than, like, looking up the ending, because I didn't know how to do that at the time. I was just a really young, dumb kid. I would just, like, come up with my own endings, right? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pretend, like, this happened or this happened or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I did that with, like, Game Ground on the Genesis. I did that with a bunch of games. I'd write, like, little comics or whatever. Yeah. And uh, it was it was really essentially early fan fiction. Just I didn't post it anywhere because I wasn't really on the internet until later on. <laughs> Star Fox 64 is a game I'd love to play. It is one of those games I fooled around with when I was really little. But sure. I was never able to get through with it. You'd probably, you'd, you'd probably like it a bit. That's what I think. It's, it's very much like an on-rail shooter, yes, but like very cinematic in how it goes about each level and its moments and shit like yeah. that. It sounds really cool. Definitely. Um, fucking looking for this last emerald. <laughs> I hate this level. That's about all I could find out on SA2, other than okay. like it was the 10th anniversary game. Yeah. They announced it alongside Sh Sonic Shuffle, <laughs> which is funny. <laughs> Sonic fucking shuffle. And it released worldwide on the Dreamcast on June 18th, 2001, right at the tail end mm. of the Dreamcast life. This was the death of the Dreamcast. Pretty much. This garbage game. I'm about to eat. Um. I hate this stage. So, so terrible. We're only 13 minutes. How bad could be? Oh, oh got God. the shades. Hell yeah. Now we're epic. already know. Now we're freaking epic. Oh, what the fuck? Bro, look at Knuckles. Those are the dumbest looking. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> what That's you so mean, weird. dumb? Pony? <laughs> That's so weird. It looks so awesome. So get this, right? The sunglasses, mm. you think, huh? Oh, the things are there, you just can't see them. Right. No. What the fuck? I'm right on top of it, aren't I? Yeah. What the hell? I have to have the sunglasses on to even use the thing. That's dumb. These, this upgrade is awful. I get that I don't want you to use it, but they could have implemented that a bit better. Yeah. Fuck, I'm trying to kill myself. Don't save me. Stop. I want to die. Stop. <laughs> Knuckles ah! is invincible, dude. This is going to be a highly edited episode, and I know that already. Probably. Well, most of them have been. Yeah. Most of the, especially in the Knuckles shit. Wonder why. I wonder what the reason behind that was. Maybe is. because the levels are too long sometimes. Only we are able to do it. Meteor Herd. Oh, God. <laughs> If you want to torture me, just make me play Meteor Herd again. I'll tell you what you want to know. <laughs> I think this is the longest we've spent a level, so. Yeah. But we're hitting records. That's not a good. That's not a good at all. Let it be known, this is not the longest I've spent in this stage before. No, I don't oh, want to sure. Come on, get up. Get up. Alright, now kill me. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Daddy, yes. De literally daddy yet fuck oh no it's over oh my god does nothing kill this asshole for <laughs> i'm wondering that right now i don't think we can die i think we're Come a on. god kill me kill me kill me please kill me kill, me. kill this fried echidna thank god finally all right who gives a shit about my score I'm already having a problem with it running this stage for- Oh shit, the timer reset. That's nice of them. A container on top of the arc. I know where that is! Thank fuck. So, if someone ever asks you, What game should I play, Sonic? What Sonic game should I play? And they say Sonic Adventure 2, they're lying <laughs> out their fucking teeth. <laughs> really, just play fucking, um... Just play Meteor Herd and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Just play Unleashed. Unleashed is a far superior game. Unleashed originally started as an adventure game, I believe. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, one of two, one of the two huge fucking hints go way too fast. Um, a high place. Uh, on the two huge containers at the top of the bottom. Oh, yeah, I know what that is. Yeah, uh, it's in Japan. It's even called Sonic World Adventure. Right. Which is very interesting. I think I knew that. Yeah. And that's not why it's considered... It was originally, like, an adventure game. I forget. There was, like, something that, like, Sega specifically said that it was supposed to be an adventure game. Hmm. Which is kind of neat. I mean, it has the two different... play. It has the different play styles that adventure games are known for. Right, right. Just switches them up a bit differently. Yeah. Instead of them being two different players, it's one player. So, like, I guess we can go ahead and get into this big question because it kind of is the big question yeah like will we ever see a sonic adventure 3 in our lifetime you think you know zach will always be like you know you can't say never and i agree with him right sure um because i think that we still have like th they could make a sonic adventure 3 in 2052 sure for all we know um but you said it in our lifetime so that's like Yes, I do think the, the the problem is like the the cries for Sonic Adventure Three. Are they loud enough? Like, when when people beg, every time a new Sonic game is announced, people beg for Sonic Adventure Three. And it's been like so many years, and we <laughs> still don't have like any proof that it's gonna happen. Right. It leads you to believe like maybe Sega just doesn't want to make it. Right, right. I definitely think they are, uh, Sega is actively trying to distance itself away. Ooh. Yeah. Got it. I just oh, think, like, is. we live in, like, an era of, like, nostalgic reboots and cash-ins and shit like yeah. that. It would not surprise me if, like, Sega out of the blue, especially with the success of Mania, yeah. would be like, yo, we're finally gonna give you the Sonic Adventure 3, and we're gonna bring it back to this old gameplay style or whatever. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, but for I, sure. But on the other hand, like, I think we do have to accept that if Sonic Adventure 3 does become a thing, I have to try harder. It's not gonna play like one and two. <laughs> no, definitely not. It's it's just been too much time. The the style has changed so much. Heck, even SA2 is so different from SA1. If we did get a three, it might not be the game people are expecting it to be. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh no. Who's the skank on my screen? Oh no, not this boss fight. And I can't take this anymore.